What is good? We're back. We got a tripod. Burr, 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 burr. But if you're not already following, we just hit up a 2024 mock with rookies. Hello. So now we're going to dive into the rookies side of this a little bit more. Diving harder. We're talking about where to take them, the value on them, this kind of a versus this guy or that guy. Um, so make sure you go check that out. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe on the podcast. So you get all the stuff right to your little grubby little fingers. Uh, our boy Austin is joining us. How you doing, man? Good, man. What's going on, fellas? How's it going? Doing, doing very, very well. A little, uh, little sleep deprived because I got a four month old. So you know those things happen. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> I've been super salty at how easy he's had it with his second kid. That I'm like, well, oh, the kid's just fucking sleeping six straight hours. Fuck yeah, we you, worked son of a bitch. Really hard for that in the first month. It wasn't like I was being lazy on well. my end. You know, I have some information going otherwise about your wife, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Being lazy? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, let's do the show. All right. So, what we have here is a fun little episode about kind of where the rookies went uh, and and who to take around them, or who went around them, and, and whether or not you think it was worth it, and and kind of where you, they're going in a startup, and whether you think that's worth it. Kind of. As they went, it was Caleb Williams, Drake May at 2-9, Marvin Harrison at 3-1, Brock Bowers at 4-6, Malik Neighbors at 4-9, Roma Dunze at 4-10, 4-11 was Michael Penix, 5-3 was Jaden Daniels, and before you get upset about that, go watch the other one. We had a nice little discussion about it. Oh, they're upset. Keon Coleman at 6-9, Agbuka at 6-11. Travion Henderson at seven two, and then Xavier Worthy was eight one, seven was eight seven, but would have been the one twelve. So that's basically would have been your first round of a rookie startup, uh, or a rookie draft rather. Um, right, which is what you're seeing in the bottom left the hand of the screen. So like, we we could kick it right off to Caleb Williams. I'm not sure anybody's going to really have a problem with Caleb Williams kind of going anywhere, um, but Caleb Williams or uh, C.J. Stroud, uh, Mr. Abbott. I prefer CJ Stroud here. I think it's a very valid question, though. I think it really just depends on who you ask, man. Um, you know, CJ Stroud was on pace to break Andrew Luck's record for uh, most passing yards during his rookie campaign. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to happen because, you know, he's going to miss whatever two games, maybe three games this season. But um, that that's how good CJ Stroud's been. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, you got to take Stroud. I mean, it's two birds in the hand. Like he's he's good. He you know he's good. Okay, I don't know if Caleb Williams is gonna come in and be good. We're probably gonna be pretty good. He's he looks fucking awesome. Yeah. So I'm not afraid to take Caleb Williams, and I don't care that he cries after the game. Like, what, what, why are people upset about that? I do not understand how Caleb Williams is somehow stock is going down. It's a bunch of super insecure grown men. I just men. don't understand. But like that being said, Stroud all day. All right. So you're a Colts fan, Anthony Richardson or Caleb Williams? Hmm. I think this is a. Bit- <laughs> Dude, I think this is even closer. Um, I think most people would lean Caleb Williams. I'm, I'm going to go Anthony Richardson. I'm doing my best to not be a homer. I am just, I, I was infatuated with Richardson as a prospect. He is the most athletic quarterback in the history of the NFL. Uh, as, or, the most athletic prospect. Let me reword that based off his Ross score. And, uh, you know, I just I liked what I saw in the small sample size. Unfortunately, it was small. I wish, you know, I wish he stayed healthy. I, you know, I I would have loved to see what this Colts team could have done with a healthy Anthony Richardson. I'll tell you what, man, the media would be all over them. They would not they would not stop talking about the Colts if Richardson was healthy. Like they would be just one of the most I, yeah. I don't even want to call them polarizing. I feel like everybody would be in on the Colts if they had a healthy Richardson, right? Now that they have Minshew, it's nobody like... Nobody cares. They're, correct. They're he, one of the he lost most his least sexy teams. Yeah, yes, nobody cares about the Colts. Like, I get it. You're all winning. Yeah. So, uh, I, I prefer Anthony Richardson over Caleb Williams. Spicy. I'll take Caleb. I can think I could take Caleb, too. But it's close. It's close. I'm, in this draft, it went CJ, Caleb, and, Caleb Anthony, and Richardson. Anthony Richardson, Reggie, Tupac, and Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> Andre from Outcast, Jada Corrupt, Nas, and then me. Yeah, I thought it was someone else I didn't know, but it's then me. He put himself after all mm-hmm. those guys. Let's go. Um, all right, we don't we don't need to get too deep into Here's Caleb a lot Williams. Off my list that it's in. We, we don't we Who's don't need next? to get too deep into Caleb. Um, Drake, Drake May, May, which you uh, in the regular draft we did this this uh, 
had a little uh, displeasure in in Drake May. You kind of already said you'd you'd go Amon Ra over over May and Garrett Wilson over May. Yep, that's correct. Yep, Jason. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think I could take Drake May there in the second round. I I like the guys I know are good. There's too many good players to take Drake May right now. I, I not not anything against Drake May. Drake May might end up turning out awesome, but I I got to take the guys I know that are. I mean, there's still so many young, awesome stud players to take. I'm going to take one of them. Okay. I'm taking, I'll take, uh, like, St. Brown and, and Garrett Wilson, I think should probably be a little earlier in the round here. So I don't know that I'll make that, have to make that decision necessarily, but I I, I think I'm, I think I'll, I think I'm leaning Drake May there. I think I'm di- hard to disagree with you guys. I mean, this, he's going to be a really highly drafted quarterback. We're, we're at a, we're at a disadvantage or, or at a, um, Supply and demand issue with with quarterbacks right now, awesome ones, especially in in fantasy. Um, and Drake May has a real chance to be special. I think as this process wears on, there's there's going to be people that whether it's for clicks or not that that go May over over Caleb because they like the prototypical size and, and way that he plays the position a little more than Caleb. I think Drake May seems to fit the part and and be good. He's going to have the draft capital. So for that, you know, I will I will take Drake May probably over those guys, um, but. You know, if you wanted to put Marvin Harrison Jr. went a few picks later, if you wanted to say take Marvin Harrison Jr. over Drake May, you know, I can't I can't make a, a terribly compelling argument over that. So would you rather have Marvin Harrison Jr. or Garrett Wilson or, or St. Brown Austin? Uh, so Marvin Harrison Jr. is my dynasty wide receiver five. Amon Ross St. Brown, Jalen Waddell, Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, all of those guys are, are I would put them in the same tier, but they are after uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. All right, so May May behind Harrison, and then Harrison mm-hmm. above. So you'd be fine with if, if Harrison would have went in that two nine spot, you'd be okay with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I personally would have taken you know Marvin Harrison Jr. over Drake May. Yeah, I think I'm fine with that for sure. Yeah, I I can't I can't make a terribly uh, compelling argument there. So um, I I think we can leave the Marvin Harrison alone a little bit there because we we've kind of covered that with with those two. Um, and, and Drake, you guys are Drake haters. I mean, I don't really like the rapper, but I mean, Drake may is, is pretty strong, quite strong. Marvin Harrison jr. How about Brock Bowers? We're talking tight end premium here. Um, he goes four, six, fourth tight end off the board. Fourth. Yeah. Fourth tight end off the board. So Laporta or Bowers. Yeah. Sorry. I personally would rather pour a man. We've just seen too much out of him. You know, I mean, again, it's the mystery box question. You know, it's like all these. We don't necessarily know what Bauer is going to be. We think he's going to be good. We think he looks like one of the best tight end prospects that we've seen in a very, very long time. Um, but you know, I, I, you got to go. You, you have to go Sam Laporta here, in my opinion. I think I, I got to agree. I mean, how can you pass on Sam Laporta and what you've seen on the NFL field? I mean, Brock Bowers could come in and do that right, same about, thing, about but Trey probably, then? How about probably Trey not. Or Brock Bowers, mm-hmm. Trey Mc. I think the That's value tough, on Brock Bowers right now is so high that you probably have to take Brock Bowers, I guess. But in the end, I mean, there's probably – McBride could certainly keep – I don't know what more he has to do, really. I mean, he's doing it. Just keep doing what he's doing. What he's doing it, yeah. I think the wise decision would be to sell Brock Bowers and get Trey McBride and change. Yeah. That's the best answer we've had all night. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like that. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we kind of talked about McBride on the uh, on the show with the overall mock and, t- and talking about it, um, where he was undervalued in this mock. Um, he's probably needs to be kind of mentioned in that same conversation up there with with Laporta and Andrews at this point, right? I mean, uh, and Andrews being thirty, is that does that make you want to reset the clock on Brock Bowers, or are you still fine with with because of what Kelsey's doing? four more extra years of, of Andrews, does that make you feel better about Andrews or would you reset the clock with Brock Bowers and hope that he's Andrews? You know, of course, if I'm in a win now type of, you know, win now type of roster, I would rather Mark Andrews. But I, I to tell you the truth, man, I think I think Brock Bowers can kind of help you win immediately. It know. would have to be. I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Mark Andrews here. It would have to be a pretty incredible scenario for any of these guys to come out and be just crushing it for you as rookies, yeah. at, as tight ends. And well, that, like that's why Laporta has vaulted himself up. And, you know, 
this is like we said, this, this mocks take time to do. It takes about a week or more. Uh, because we have a, a two hour clock on every pick. So people have time to make picks. It pauses overnight. So there's usually like two weeks of games that happen before we actually get to sit down and record and talk about it. So, and what's crazy in dynasty is it's a little redrafty where recency bias, sure. you know, dictates a lot. So when Trevor Lawrence has a terrible game on national television, his value goes down when, uh, Laporta has three touchdowns, you know, his value goes up from last week you know like he just he's been coming on so strong and just been great all year long that you know i don't know but that we're not even talking about laporta you're so brock bowers or mark andrews i mean i don't think you could trade mark andrews for the one four in tight end premium super flex rookie mocks you probably can't even get them you can't get the one four or you can't right get I, I don't think you could if I have Mark Andrews, I don't think they're going to give me one four for him because he's not playing. He's the recency bias, you know, likely coming on 30 years old. It's 30. I think so. Let me pull that up. Yeah, I, th- I think I could get that done in my league, to be honest with you. I know every league's different. Um, sure, That's a good point. I I, th- I think I would be able to to get the fourth overall pick for Mark Andrews. Oh, well, then Mark Andrews. So Mark Andrews will be 29 going into next season. Well, that changes everything. <laughs> You see a 30 up there is mentally yeah. debilitating for... He's owner. basically 29, so he'll be 29 going into the next season. I think, it, you know, depending on where that team is, it, if, you know, is the one f- team p- team picking at 1-4 bad be- and they earn the 1-4, or do they just have some bad luck? Um, it's really hard to get rid of Andrews. Oh, take him off your roster if you got a good team, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think resetting the clock for Bowers, you know, I think it's a, it's a where your roster is kind of situation. All right, let's keep it moving here. Um, let's go Malik Neighbors or Nico Collins. Austin. Four nine Dude. neighbors went in this one, Dude. right in between Ayuk and Collins as the veterans. There's other rookies in between those guys. Um, but Ayuk went right before neighbors and, and Nico basically went right after neighbors. I mean, this is this for, this uh what is this, fourth round is is sweet. Yeah. Andrews, Dude, Porta, you, you, Smith, Puka, Bowers, Higgins, Ayuk, Malik Neighbors, Odunze. Well, I'm not even gonna say Michael Panics, ah, everyone's mad about that. And then Nico, like what a what a fourth round. What what do you what do you got, Austin? Malik or uh who'd you say? Ayuk. Ayuk. Oh, I thought the question was between oh, no, Nico, you said but Nico. Malik Nico, or Nico. Right? I said I said I said yeah, Malik, well, basically he's in between Ayuk and Nico. So, you know, how how you feeling? You could kinda answer both. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll talk about all three receivers real quick. I would oh. put Nico last, and I and I like Nico. I would put Nico last. Uh, Ayuk versus Neighbors is an interesting question. Um, it's kind of hard to say no to to Ayuk at this point. I feel, I do feel like Ayuk deserves to be above Neighbors. I, however, have come you know come out on Twitter just talked about how much I like Malik Neighbors. He's my wide receiver in this class, and I think one to two years from today, I I really think Malik Neighbors is going to be a fringe top ten dynasty receiver. That's that's how good I think this kid's going to be. I think he's close to bust proof. I'm I'm really really high on Malik Neighbors. Uh, I still think Brandon Ayuk deserves the nod though. I don't think you could trade Ayuk for Neighbors in a, if you're in the middle of a rookie draft. No, I don't think so. Correct. So I think I got, you know, I don't know as much about these rookies as you guys do. I haven't done as much research, um, but I, the one thing that, that, that is the most valuable thing is understanding the value of picks and what, what, where these players are going to go and what range they're going to go in and what that pick is valued at. You know, we've been doing this for so long that I, I just kind of know what, what, what the value of a rookie pick is a first round rookie pick and whether that's early, mid or late and depending on the class and the hype around it. And, you know, it doesn't mean that that stuff's all going to pan out. Everyone goes from loving a class to hating a class back to loving it, back to hating it. It's all trash. Everyone just wants to make these ridiculous statements of absoluteness that I can't stand. But, you know, this is a strong class. It's very deep, wide receiver heavy. And Malik neighbors is, you know, you got people thinking that he's better than fucking Marvin Harrison. So, Ayuk, or at least on the same footing. I love Close. Ayuk, and I ha- I've been getting Ayuk at a discount for a while, and and we would buy Debo when Ayuk was the more expensive one, and we bought Ayuk when Debo was the more expensive one, and that's how you play this game, and that's how you come out on top. And I love Ayuk, and I I think 
why wouldn't the 49ers re-sign him, figure out a way to re-sign him? Same thing with T. Higgins. Why wouldn't the Bengals find out a way to re-sign him and keep him with this situation because it's working so well? It just The cap's fake. Figure it out. Y'all figure it out. Do the right thing. I think that's what's going to happen. I would bet Ayuk's back with the Niners. All that being said, you can't get neighbors for with Ayuk. Like, so I think I would take neighbors and then try and buy Ayuk plus change. You know, that's what's mm-hmm. a cop-out you had earlier, Austin. I like that. I'm going to double down on that. Yep. I was thinking the same exact thing, man. Maybe if you could get a second added on or or just something else that was valuable, like a valuable veteran, um, you know, why not? You know, I mean, look, man, if everything works Nico out Collins for him, but that's yeah, sales. Can't add on Nico <laughs> anymore, no. yeah, if everything works out perfectly, which it almost never does, I think Malik neighbors would be better than Brandon Ayuk, right? That's how high I think his ceiling is. But I hope, you know, again, like, like, I think if you drafted Brandon Ayuk, you look at that as a home run, right? You are ecstatic, you know, not just in redraft, but in Dynasty too, man. Like, sure, it was relatively, I don't even want to call it like a slower start. Like, he hit 1,015 receiving yards. He what, hit the two, uh, three, two or three. That yeah, yeah, but he still, like, cracked 1,000 yards, and here we are. Like, now he's finally erupting. And, you know, he's still so young, man. Like, he's still in his first contract. I mean, he's going to be around for a long time. Oh, for sure. I mean, well, but it, but we don't know if it's going to be with the Niners. That's that's the only. Cause I think just, it will be because he's a because he's under he's a restricted he's a he's a free agent next year, so they haven't mm-hmm. extended him. What's going to happen there? Maybe we'll do. I think we should probably do a wide receiver free agency show, like we did the running back free agency show, telling you like who's going to be free agents, the top guys, and then where we think they might land, and predicting landing spots and stuff. So make sure you go check that out. But you know, if we did one more for wide receivers, like I already said, it, I th- I th- I'm with you, Austin. I think he. I think he stays, but you don't know. You know, you really don't know. And if he, and then the minute he signs an extension with them, his value goes up. Yeah, I think you take neighbors over Ayuk for sure. Um, I think you take him over Nico too. How about Roma Dunze? He seems like right now he's coming under some fire for, from from some some draft analysts, at least the the Twitter fantasy football ones. For you know, he's got the seem, seems to be digging up some negativity on him, which I, I I will scream into the mountaintops that you can get the fuck out of here with just about anything you can come up with. Uh, just this is the one where you just have to put the tape on and go, OK, this is silly. So Roma Dunze or Nico Collins. Oof! I thought you were going to hit me with Ayuk. I was going to say Ayuk. But since you said Nico, I got I, dude. I think I'm going to go Rome here. I like Rome a lot. He's he's a good player. He's he's going to be good in the NFL, man. I will, I'll, everybody that's slandering him on Twitter. Guess what? You're wrong because he's going to be good, man. <laughs> yeah, I saw something. I, are the analytical people mad at him? Is that what's going on? Uh, I saw somebody be like, is the analytical crowd going to let me get a discount on Roma Dunze? Yeah. I forget, I mean, I forget who I saw that tweet from, but I thought that was a good tweet, and I didn't I didn't quite understand the context. There, but There's a couple different parts and pieces that, they're, that, that some people are starting to break down on Rome. But we'll, that we'll, being said, give me Nico Collins. Mm, okay. Look, what, what do you want? What do you want Rome to be? Like I don't even know if he can be Nico. Like, what, oh, look he at Nico. can absolutely be Nico. Yeah, yeah. We well, better be if you're going to take him over him. He could be up. He could be up a round or two. He could be a top. He could be a second round well, receiver. Well, you guys forgot Rome is a late declare, so he can't be good. Obviously, right? Oh yeah, you know? that's. I mean, that's, more that's how it works. Mm. And and his contested catches, you know, getting getting you know such a growth of being good at contested catches later, and you know just a bunch of nonsense. So anyway, let's keep it moving here. Let's talk about a couple more guys before we get out of People here. People like to outsmart themselves. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Let's go, Jaden Daniels, or and for those that uh, are looking at this and, and haven't watched uh, the other breakdown we did of this, where we we, we did a more holistic view of, of just the startup and breaking down everything, not just the rookies, which we're trying to hone in on here. I said on that show, I messed up. I wasn't looking at the rookies. We're doing this through sleeper. Uh, the rookies are not in there. We used kickers. I created this graphic for you so you could see who it was, but we just texted in who our pick was. And, you know, I took Jared Goff, and two picks later, Jaden Daniels gets texted in, and I was like, ah, damn, I should definitely have taken Jaden Daniels over Jared Goff. So I wanted to make yeah. that caveat there. I so fucked that up. I was going to put him up against – I saw two red boxes. I was like, ah, that's probably not Jared Goff or Jordan Love. No, nah, you got to go close. higher. You got to go yeah, higher. Yeah, yeah. I don't uh, even want to go up. There's no really – I mean, Brock Purdy or Jaden Daniels. Give me Purdy. You got to take Purdy at this point, right? Dude, I mean, if you're going to win the MVP, you're going to win the MVP. You know, he might. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I like Jaden Daniels. He's starting to grow on me a lot more. But Purdy's just been fantastic. How about Egbuka or Zay Flowers? Got to go Zay Flowers there, right? And I like Egbuka too. I think he could have a bright future in the NFL. I think a lot of things could break. Uh, I think a lot of things could break right for Emeka Egbuka. 
you know, his stock is down. It's definitely trending down over the past year. People were a lot more bullish on him, uh, whatever, two years ago. But, you know, I, I still like him. I still, he's still a good prospect, but but Zay Flowers looks like a hit. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and it hasn't been working out super great the whole time with Zay Flowers. And neither, like, from a statistical standpoint, the same thing with Lamar Jackson. Like, you know, Zay's had some down weeks here after coming out kind of hot. Buy window for Zay Flowers is what I want to say. Yeah, I would, I would and, say And so. I would take Zay over Igbuka, but How about Rashi just, Rice or Igbuka? Oh, Rashi. Got to yeah. go Rashi here, man. I think so. I think I agree. Rashi, I mean, what we are going to get with Rice is there's, the, you know, I, I can't imagine the Chiefs are coming out of this draft without, without one high, high dollar, high end receiver, or if not T. two, Higgins. Or, or a free agent. And, a, and a, you know, I think they're just going to go all in heavy on investing on. But you have to love what you've seen from Rashi Rice. You know, he looks I like mean, he can handle it. And he looks like it's hard for them to handle him. Yeah, I mean, he he certainly needs to start learning how to expand the game a little bit. Um, but the things, the way that they've they're using him and and they figured out what he does best right now, I mean, I think is is awesome. He needs to become a little bit more of a complete wide receiver for them. But it's a rookie, they've right exactly, and they've they've kind of figured out what he's really good at, and he's been. You know, white hot. Sky Moore has talent. He ain't figured out how no. to do none of nothing. Nothing. You know, get rid he, of him. He has talent. Rashi has talent and put it into play, and he's earning. He earned play time. He earned snaps. He earned targets, and now he's earning like the most targets. Yeah. You know, and it's like, fuck. I, I, I love that. I, li- I liked him a lot coming out of college. Wasn't a ton of tape to watch, but we really liked what we saw. We were high on him the most, and. And now, and now it's you know you seen you've seen him just mature throughout the whole season. He's gotten yeah. better from the start of the season. Like I gotta give a shout out to Rashi Rice. Like he and he, he definitely he's probably got to be higher. Where is he even on this board? I mean, he's got to go up. But oh yeah, he oh, was a uh, seven, seven, seven 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 seven. Yeah, that that it's probably too low. Again, mocks a couple weeks old. So we talked about it in the other breakdown a little bit. Got to ra- got to raise him up. How about if Travion Henderson comes out? Kyron Williams or Travion Henderson. Mm. That's a good one. What do you think, Austin? So that's basically, you know, maybe you'd be trading a late first and super flex tight end premium for 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 Kyron, you know, or it could Sounds be like top of the second. Value. So that seems like what everybody's been telling you to sell for. God. If you get a first, probably got to go Kyron. What do you think, Austin? I think you got to go Kyron. I think you have to go Kyron. I agree. The pro- you just you can't collect the production, man. It's been incredible. He has been a superstar this season, and I really like Trevion Henderson. I kind of think it's you know. His, he's probably going to be the RB1 in this class, I, I think, if he decides to come out, which I think he is going to come out. Right? I saw a lot of reports on Twitter, probably all garbage, about him going back. I don't know. Maybe they were valid. I'm not sure. But I think there's a very real argument to be Ohio, made for you know Trevion Henderson to be the RB1 in this class. Ohio State NIL money is nothing to fuck with. So yeah. I would not be surprised. In Neither like, is Wu-Tang. You know, I don't, I don't know. He hasn't given an indication, and other running backs are transferring out of there. So it's looking like, you know, yeah. I don't know why he would. Why wouldn't you go get some money? You know, I don't know why you go risk yourself, but they must be giving him a truckload of money and a big insurance policy and, you know, and a chance to win a national championship. I don't know what they got. You know, maybe college life is the best, so I don't know. Yeah, and I mean, maybe he just feels like, hey, I, I, I was really good when I got hurt. I can maybe even in, improve my draft stock as well as come back to college because I really like it here, get some cash. You know, it's interesting. So let's go. Let's So let's say that's the number one running back just for kicks in this class here or James Cook. Oh, man. Oh. James Cook. I you got to be good here. Uh, You're going I, think you I think you got to go James Cook. So. I think you got to go James Cook, but. God, I, just, I don't know, man. Is it is a little too much recency bias? Like, are we all as like, you know consensus? Are, are we getting too high on him? Bias at that point, I think. Like, I don't know if it's that much, but let me pull this up. Um, the last like four or five weeks have been usage wise, been what at least past game, and then this past game was <laughs> in the past game, and then this past game. <laughs> it's only been five games. Sorry. Um, you know, he got the he got a decent amount of uh, runs in the gut there, and look, look, look has looked always looked good when he gets his opportunities. It's just about the opportunities, you know, which we could be disgusted with with the run game of the Bills in a hurry again. Well, it's trending up. You're going. You're, it is. Yeah, it is right now. They need it. It needs to happen. They need to have yeah. balance. They need to keep. They need to keep Josh, Josh Allen, Allen from beating their running back. Passing yards. Um, you know. You know they were beating the hell out of the Cowboys, uh, with with you know physicality. What was your final answer there, uh, Austin? James Cook. All right. 
I like it. I like it. Is that what you're going with? I'll, I'll go James Cook, uh, mostly because I'm not terribly familiar with how much I like Travion Henderson. I know that. And I'm just looking at the value. Like, a Travion Henderson is going to be a late first, early second round pick. You mm-hmm. can't get James Cook with that right now. So, I'll take James Cook. I mean, I think you can. I think some people would be willing to, to trade a first for for James Cook. Like, plus trade for, James Cook for first? For, like, Big D, who's on the pod, who's not a big James Cook guy because he's, he never, he's not a believer in that Buffalo will consistently have this kind of usage. He might, you know, maybe it's, maybe James Cook, you could get, even get more for that at this point right now. But, you know, there are, I'm sure, people out there that, that still aren't totally bought into that. Anybody else on this board that you would like to, you know, how about uh, Trey Benson or David Montgomery? Oh, man. These questions are wild, man. Like, these are great questions, but it's just so, this is going to be great to look back on in like six months or a year or even two years, man. Because, you know, a lot of these Trey guys. Benson. Right. A lot of these guys may never pan out. Um, but Trey Benson is somebody that I'm significantly more bullish on than most. I, I, I'm a big fan of Trey Benson's game. I, I agree with you. And and Montgomery's a great player. Like Montgomery by no no I don't no. think his career is over, right? Like mm. he's he's still gonna go on to have a handful of, you know, good years in Detroit, I firmly believe. So I just I just want to set that straight. Um, but yes, give me give me Trey Benson here. Yeah, I think you got to go Trey Benson just because you're re-rolling into some some youth. Obviously, there's been an injury with Trey Benson, but you know Monty's been nicked up, and you just you're hoping that you get like a little bit more of a of a of a one A dominate in the backfield role with Trey out of the gate, where you know David Montgomery is most likely you know barring injury is going to be splitting a backfield with an elite talent. And so, nobody really likes Montgomery, no. you know. So you you probably couldn't get. An early second for I guess you could maybe get an early second for Montgomery. How about your boy Xavier Worthy or uh Chris Godwin? I think you gotta go Chris Godwin here. Um I, I think Chris Godwin's stock is down too much. I know he did just have a phenomenal game prior to that. He only had like one top fifteen week all season long. You know, he's he's been a disappointment this year, but at the end of the day, man, like he's still a relatively young wide receiver, and I think I think Tampa Bay Buccaneers is still a good spot for him to just remain, right? I hope he I hope he stays there. I hope him and Mike Evans just continue to be that one two punch. I don't know what Evans' future holds, but um I think Chris I think Chris Godwin is is more of a buy than anything is the point that I'm getting at. Yeah. I, I agree. I tend to agree. Yeah, um, he looked good again this last game. He was making a ton of plays, just moving mm-hmm. the sticks. Yeah. And I don't know what the final like output from fantasy he crushed twenty five. Yeah, it seemed yeah. like it was a lot. Right. And I think Mike Evans is a free agent. He's right? been, yeah, yeah. He's so, been. I mean, he's he's been like a, a little a little inconsistent. Get get you eight ten here and there. But I just feel oh, like you got Mike as, Evans out there. Right. And Mike Evans and, was crushing. And as soon as you switched your your you know focus a little bit more towards what Godwin was doing, and maybe he's been you know he's been a little banged up or whatever, but. Um, he's it's, he's obviously got the ability there, and, and we don't know what the future holds for Mike Evans, like you said. All right, real quick, before we get out of here, we read through the first round, just kind of what the second round would have been in a rookie uh, draft here. would have been Braylon Allen leading at 2-1. He went 8-12. Trey Benson at 2-2. He went 9-10. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr., the LSU wide receiver, 6-4. Big fella, uh, he went 2-3, 10-5. Estime going 2-4. He went 11-6. Uh, Walker in a rookie draft would have went 2-5. Uh, that's Tez Walker. Uh, and ele- he went 11-9 in this one. And then this is egregious. Troy Franklin, I think, at, at 2-6 in a, in a rookie draft going 12-4. That's absurd. J.J. McCarthy and Bo Nix go next. 2-7, two, 2-8. Two, then Jatavian Sanders. Uh, the, the, I think the tight end two of this class. Bucky Irvin go 14-7. Blake Corum going 14-10. That would have been 2-11. And then to round out the second round, uh, at 15-3 is Devin Neal. Um, and, and we gave uh, Devin Neal his flowers, especially Ab- Abbott over there. You know, I don't I don't really I don't think it's fair to put Devin Neal up against any of the running backs that he got drafted around in here. Um, but if we moved up a little bit, Devin Neal or Roshan. Oh, I'd rather I'd rather Neal. Same. Uh, Devin Neal or well, Mixon went late in this one. Devin Neal or Mixon? Dude, I'm out on Mixon. I, I don't want <laughs> any part him. of Joe Mixon. You took him. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, well, I had this more of, I, I told you in the previous pod, dude, that, that's so funny that I know, I know I took him, but. <laughs> He went. He went with a win now uh, approach in that thing, right, and, and right. Mixon that, was hanging around. I get it. Well, if you're in right. a win now approach, but you're out on Mixon, you don't take Mixon though, so you can't be out. Right. On him. Hey, it's a fair argument. You're not wrong. 
Um, I just, I guess if this was a 100% real draft, I, I probably would have avoided Joe Mixon and, and rolled with, um, I, you know, I just knew that Neil was going to go significantly later. And I mean, dude, Mixon is just having such an absurd season. Like it, I feel like everybody, myself included, wants to quit on Joe Mixon. And he's just having a fantastic year. So, I mean, in that actual uh, draft, where you know you took you took Cup, McLaurin, Evans, Mixon, and 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 Keenan Allen right there. I mean, that's that Mixon's a great player for the build that you had going on. So there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, some, yeah, I don't hate that pick. I just the sentiment that you're out. Was, sometimes, it, right. especially in rookie drafts, if we're equating those two, and obviously we're using this draft to kind of shake out how a rookie draft goes when you start talking about them sometimes you're like yeah well in a rookie draft i would have done this as opposed to how it goes in a start it's just how it yeah. kind of always is and it boggles my mind it doesn't make sense when like i would take this guy in a startup but not in the rookie draft you know like, yeah or, I mean, like i would take this veteran over this rookie in a startup but in the in the rookie draft i won't trade you this pick for that veteran i, I drives me insane that the the mentality the psychology, psychology behind there. Of why yeah there's, there's you know different. Uh, so anyway, uh, before we wrap up, anything else you want to say or anything you want to throw out there before we get out of here uh, on this uh, where to take rookies in a startup way too early? Uh, five things you must do. Buy, sell, hold. <laughs> must, and buy, must and don't and avoids. 2024 sells, 2024 buys, 2024 <laughs> roster cloggers. Um, 114.78% of your league mates will make this mistake. 2024... Um, Mustaches. Moves you must make right now. 2024 cornerstone rankings. Rookie buy, sell, hold. Mm, there we go. All right, Austin, what do you got? <laughs> I appreciate you guys for having me. I'm excited for the draft coming up in you know, a few months. It's it's going to get there quicker quicker than you think. Uh, you know, It's just going to be great talking about rookies all offseason. So something that I'm just strongly looking forward to. Think about it every single day, you know? It's the uh, best day of the year, man. Love it. So we're, we'll, we'll be hammering plenty more startup mocks, rookie mocks, uh, all those silly titles. And we'll yeah, talk if y'all about- didn't know what we were talking about, we're being assholes. All these titles, basically the same thing. Like, he did put this stupid title on there. guys. Because that's what... Because we can't just have a conversation and be like, hey, podcasts are must up. Just listen to that. We're going to talk about these guys. You got to have a title for people to click on it. It's anyway. the YouTube algorithm that's driving these stupid ass titles. Be sure to subscribe. Comment below. Be sure to check out Austin at Austin Abbott. That's two T's, two B's, two T's, two F's on the Twitter. He's already knee deep in your rookie evaluations, uh, giving you some some insight to the mind of Abbott over there. Uh, and you'll be seeing plenty more of his face on the FF Dynasty channel and voice on the pod. So we very much appreciate you. We very much appreciate you guys listening. And we will catch you next time. Hopefully I'm less sleep deprived or to Jason's chagrin more sleep deprived because he hates me apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a rough time with my kid, my second kid. Sometimes you, it's luck. And, uh, it's luck and work. And I was jealous as out. fuck at how your kid was sleeping and mine wasn't. <laughs> and, you were just like, oh, feeling good, got sleep. I'm like, fuck you, man, because it took like 13 months before my kids started sleeping. So, so uh, I mean, it sucks to suck. What could you say? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, she's it's, a sweetheart some, now. She really fucking figured it out. Thank some, God. Some luck of the draw in there for sure. But yeah, we put in mad work for sleep training. A lot of sleeping right next to the crib on a on a nugget. So, anyhow, Austin has no idea. What no, talking half about. the audience just is like, what are they talking? About? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate y'all. Hit that like, subscribe, hit that five star review. Peace. Peace. <laughs>